Cowboy Jim. And uh, I would like to um, thank you for allowing me to be in front of you. I have often thought that this is the gate to the sheepfold where Paul was asked, uh, oh shoot, Peter was asked, geez, I look at my Bible, I'm getting back into it, children. And um, Peter was asked by Jesus, uh, do you love me? And Peter, he, he was pretty forthright, that, that man, that fisherman. And uh, he, he said, uh, yes. And, uh, and Jesus asked him three times, and there was a reason for that. And Peter kind of got upset at the end of it. And uh, he said, you know me, and you, you know I love you. And God knows me, and he knows my frailty. And again, I look at my scripture, my Bible, and I realize, don't take too much for granted. Uh, no one's arrived, I haven't arrived. And I have purposed in my heart uh, to start a new beginning. And that is to try to uh, delineate, uh, to tell you a few stories. I, I, I'm gonna throw in a few uh, horseback stories. Uh, I'll probably start with this one right away. A uh, friend of mine, same friend of mine who was taking care of my youngest son when my youngest son wandered uh, because my friend was preoccupied with uh, a bunch of kids taking them down to the end of Hidden Lake, which is a beautiful lake uh, southwest of Sundry out uh, on the Yaha Tender Ranch. And my friend uh, lost track of my youngest son. And, and uh, we have a video on here, uh, and it's called My Lost Son. Many people would think that had to do with a son wandering away uh, into the things of the world. And uh, that's not at all the case. Uh, it was my eight, nine-year-old son uh, who gave me permission uh, to tell that story. Um, and I'm going to walk in it again. Um, and that is that my son um, became lost by the time they got to the end of the lake. And truly... Um, probably the second or the third most watched videos that we have. The fourth one is uh, my son's miracle. That That is the, my oldest boy, Scott. He also gave me permission to, and so I'm walking in that again too. And uh, my youngest son traveled uh, down a valley away from that lake because somehow he had gotten separated in uh, maybe a third of a mile. That hidden lake was only about a third of a mile long. And, uh, and he had gotten separated somehow because there are many game trails there and the game trails are not made by uh, just Bambi and her mom. Um, but rather are made by mountain lions and grizzlies and black bear and things that are uh, at the top of the food chain. They don't look upon humans as being uh, superior uh, because we're not. Um, those big animals look upon you and I uh, as 
something they're really not too sure that they want to get close to, but if they do get close to, they'll eat you. And they're not afraid to do that because they're not afraid. Um, the most beautiful woman in the world uh, that I ever met, uh, she did an expose on fear. And um, I watched it um, 50 times. I think that's an understatement. I think it was much, much, much more. And she spoke of fear. And the resultant uh, calamitous behavior that comes when you subject yourself to listening to fear. And uh, there is a scripture, it, it indicates that Satan goes around as a roaring lion uh, in order to ascertain really who might run from him. And that's what animals do. Um, I only had the privilege and the honor, my cousin and I, John Martin, you have heard me speak of him a lot. That's because he's a good man. And uh, a mountain lion tried to put the run on us. And um, I have never known fear. Well, I, I have known of it. I have seen it manifested in the eyes of people whose spirit world was a little different than the average human. And uh, and it entered into a world of demons and evil spirits and things that uh, we don't understand very much about, except that in Scripture, uh, uh, one third of the angels fell, uh, chose to leave heaven, leave God, and follow uh, Satan. And Satan wanted simply to become God, which is why he attacked Eve in the Garden of Eden uh, over that very self-same issue, wherein he said, uh, God knows that if you understand the difference between good and evil, that you will become God. How many religions are there nowadays uh, that purport, uh, put forth the concept that you as an individual can become God, quite a few. And, um, and they're, 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 they're lying to you. Um, it's simple. Anyways, uh, I followed my son for a few hours. I, I would like to say several hours, but I, I, I truly do try to um, keep uh, what I say to be verify, uh, verified by others. Uh, thus, when I uh, speak of um, either of my sons, I will verify with them. If it's a pertinent uh, thing, I'll verify before I tell the story, just so that my memory is functional. Satan chooses many ways uh, to use uh, his fallen angels who minister in certain and very specific areas, one of which is fear. Fear is a, a terrible, a debilitating thing. It uh, ruins your life and it is in an effort to see if you will run. And if you run, you are uh, open uh, to being attacked, uh, killed, uh, literally, not, not just figuratively. My neighbor across um, Highway 549 uh, lived down on on uh, the Sheep River, uh, just about a mile from the ranch house. And uh, 
he asked me one time, he said, Jim, would you come over and, and, and sleep a few nights uh, out near the corral? Um, because a mountain lion had attacked one of his horses. And uh, I said, that sounds kind of uh, like something I'd do. And my nephew, uh, good kid, won't say his name, kind of tall, good kid. He is uh, a self-proclaimed adventurer. And he is. And he and I went over and, and spent uh, a few nights uh, sleeping on the ground uh, with our backs uh, up against uh, the barn right next to the corral. And uh, I want to know that no one can attack me from behind. So I don't turn my back on trouble much. But he and I that night, he, he nudged me. Apparently I'd fallen asleep and he nudged me and I, I woke up and then he kind of hit me. And he pointed and uh, standing about mm, 16 feet in front of us was a young uh, uh, bull moose. Uh, and apparently, uh, much to my shock, apparently I snore. Who knew? Well, I knew. And uh, I had snored, uh, otherwise no one has called that moose in and he is standing there studying the idiot that was sleeping and the tall skinny kid that was smiling at the moose. If Satan's picking on you, he picks on you primarily in a, a few simple areas. Um, fear, uh, self-pity, self-doubt. He uses every avenue that he can to try in every way that he can to destroy you in that his job in scripture is to rob, steal, and destroy. God, on the other hand, wants to build you up. And the way he does that is the way that he made an opportunity for you to choose to believe in him and to turn your back, uh, uh, shall we say, somewhat on Satan. But if you turn your back on Satan totally, uh, I do not mean in any other way than to be attentive to how he operates, how he wishes to destroy you. Um, don't turn your back on an enemy. I, I did that one time. Robin's Donuts, 92 or something. And um, I fight against abuse of children, of women, of animals, livestock. And there are less things in animals, livestock, to be, for me to be offended in, in that ranchers do not torture their animals, never intentionally. But Satan works overtime to kill you. He uses various things, your health, your wealth, poor management of money can lead to a lot of sadness and results in self-pity and other things that are not beneficial to you, for you, not, not even close. So 
once again, I started off with a, a game plan that was not written in stone, but it is a game plan that was formulated as I looked into this laptop. Children, this is going to be my typical uh, length of video, roughly, because I recognize that your time is important and you don't have a lot of it to throw around. I want to encourage you in this. Your time is yours. You are the author and the finisher in your life. It is your decision that determines your destiny. I will just sum this up by saying, consider God. He loves you. Therein is life. God bless. God bless you.